What's up everybody? This is BC, Brian Casella. Welcome back to another video. This particular video is gonna be a powerful, powerful message for both the consumer and real estate agents, okay? Um, this topic is thrown around a lot and I wanted to really talk about the relevancy of a real estate agent in the world and really give you the importance of it, why we're always gonna be here, why it's a necessity, right? Why it's a benefit and I really wanted to break it down in a simple fashion so everybody can understand. Just like the consumer at times has reservations about using a realtor or their qualifications or are they necessary. At the same time, a lot of agents, especially newer agents or agents who have been struggling, still look at themselves sometimes as almost like being disposable and they say, well, am I really worth it? And I wanted to break down some facts and give you some insights as to demonstrate to you why we are relevant and why we actually are a very valuable asset when it comes to this day and age, when it comes to the transaction of buying and selling uh, real estate, okay? Now, as a uh, foreword in the beginning, I want to state that I'm making this video coming from the position of you are somebody, especially in the consumer's uh, shoes, you're looking at selling a piece of property for the most amount of money or buying it in the most secure fashion and in the best price and terms possible for you and a fair open market, okay? I'm not talking about secret off-market investment deals. I'm not talking about an, uh, a particular owner, right? A homeowner who just wants to get rid of their property for cash and get a quick deal. I'm talking in a normal scenario where the person is selling and either moving or they wanna sell their home for top dollar um, in an open market, okay? And I wanted to state that just in case there's some people who uh, who want to attack what I say or, or debate it, okay? At the same time, as I'm speaking throughout this video, if there's any other additional points you'd like to put, whether you're an agent or a consumer, I'd be happy to see it, and it's good for you guys to add anything that I might have missed or that you would like to add in the video, okay? So let's get down to the nitty gritty, okay? First and foremost, I'm not gonna spit off all the facts that we know that you can find at National Association of Realtors and all the research and data that's been done, literally proving that using an agent, you sell for more money, right? Now, there's a lot of reasons that go into it and I'm gonna cover the reasons. I'm not gonna cover the stats or facts. You can easily pull those up. I might even put some in the description just so you can see. It, it really is just, you know, results, okay? Now, one of the main reasons that that is so meaning that when I or another realtor represent a home and we sell it, is you need to understand this. Hiring a realtor gives you, the homeowner, maximum exposure for the commodity, which is your home, in an open market. What I mean by commodity is this, okay? And this point has to be understood, especially when we're looking at price, okay? Your home, all the memories you have in it, all the personal stuff, that is sentimental value, that's priceless. However, once everything is taken out, and it's just floors, windows, carpet, whatever it is, and it's empty, your property is now a commodity with a set price, okay? Now, a lot of times that sentimental value gets thrown in there, or we as homeowners tend to think that our home and our particular home is special. Now, in a sentimental sense, absolutely it's special. However, once again, we empty it and we put it out on the market, it is no longer special, okay? Aside from the custom homes that are built, in the luxury areas for five, 10, 15, 20 million, okay, then an argument can be made for that. However, for the typical home in a typical subdivision, at that point, once we remove the human element from it, it is not special anymore, okay? Now, a professional realtor who is skilled is gonna be able to price your home properly and give it that super duper, super duper exposure, right? The open market exposure. Now, we do it through multiple tools like the MLS, but you need to understand this. 92%, and this is why, 92% somewhere in there, right? It flows between, I think, 88 and like 93% all the time of people who are going to purchase a home, future buyers, are working with real estate agents, okay? By virtue of that, a realtor having it will automatically expose it to that huge buyer pool of 92, 93%, 88%, 90%, whatever it is. And we have to understand that. So you being a homeowner, even if you put it on the internet, and put it on Zillow and, and Trulia and for sale by owner.com and buy owner daily or whatever it is, you need to understand that you're gonna severely limit it because by it not being with the realtor, they're not gonna find it. You will be getting calls from realtors like myself who do uh, give phone calls to for sale by owners and that kind of stuff, but you need to understand that our angle is either, we're looking at you 
a little bit differently because from the outside, right? If we go to a seminar where they're teaching people how to invest, one of the biggest targets they tell them to go after is a for sale by owner. The automatic perception from the outside is that you're, you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna sell it for less, and they're gonna get a deal as an investor, right? Now, you may be watching this saying, well, no, I wanna sell it for top dollar, right? So you need to understand that perception is everything. So you will be confronted from that angle, and here is why, here is why. Let's look at a watch, for example. I have a Rolex, right here, boom, Rolex. We have two options. We can go to a high-end retail store where they will have the watch on display. We get to look at it and it has its price. Or you can go to a garage sale or a private sale and look at a Rolex. All other factors aside, is it safe to say, and I'm sure everybody will agree with me, that if you go to the retail store, you're gonna be paying top dollar for that Rolex versus the private sale. And why is that? Because it's retail, right? Retail, we go into the store, you maybe in some cases you can haggle them a little bit, but the price is the price and, and, and that's already accepted and that's its form because it's at the storefront, it's legit, that's what it is. From a private sale, it's like, hey dude, come on man, this is a garage sale, this is a private sale, you're going to haggle, right? And that's just the nature of it. So now being a for sale by owner, if we're talking about somebody selling a property, that mentality is already going to be implemented and seen here, unfortunately for you as the homeowner, right? Whether we like it or not. Whether we want to say, well, you know, I'm a homeowner and I'm knowledgeable, that's great, but it doesn't matter because perception is everything. So now someone's going to come in already thinking they can get a deal, okay? And you're sitting there clawing and fighting what you feel to be unjust behavior from people. But that's just, again, that's the psychological factor of it. So that's working against you as well, okay? Another fact that I give people is, let's look at uh, actors or professional athletes as just one example. When it comes to their fees and, and, and everything that they do, do they negotiate their own contracts? No, a neutral third party, a manager, does it for them, okay? So, when I look at that, I say, great. If that's the case, then why would somebody not on their largest asset, right? Even if they have somewhat knowledge of it, right? Why would they not hire an expert who's an expert at in the actors and uh, athletes case, negotiating that contract and getting them the most money and the best deal and working the deal. That's what it's about, it's about working the deal. I can work the deal for you of selling the house. Yes, I have a fee, of course, but I'm a master at working the deal. And this is where we have to make the distinction, okay? This is, again, assuming you go with a, a professional, seasoned, knows what they're doing, has your best, best interest in mind agent. Not the part-time agent who you know, it's just doing it as a side hustle who doesn't really take it seriously. I have nothing against part-time agents. There's some that are great. I know a lot of them. I'm talking about somebody dedicated to the craft, just like the person who represents the actor or the athlete. In that case, those people are not going to be amateurs. They're going to be great at what they do. Okay? So if they would hire a third party to maximize their profit and what they make and get a great contract and great smooth transition in what they're doing, why wouldn't a homeowner do that? Right? Why would they not? It, it's funny that there's so many things that we won't um, do on our own, but when it comes to the sale of, for most people, their biggest asset, they want to try it on their, own, uh, on their own. And I just sit there sometimes, I'm like, wow, there's some brave people. Now I understand the, the spirit of do it yourself. I kind of have that too in certain um, categories in life and I get it. So this isn't, we can say an attack on that mentality. It's just an enlightenment into the reality of the situation. Okay, again, let's go back to the example of the sentimental value you love your house. When it comes time to now transact, right, and get offers and have buyers come in, and we're selling your home now, when offers come in, right, a lot, I've noticed this with a lot of for sale by owners, and we tend to do this with our own stuff, is it, everything is taken personal, okay? When you have that third party and the transaction like ourselves, right, the realtor, we can negotiate neutrally meaning we don't have our own personal emotion and pride vested into it, okay? I can't tell you, I've lost count of all the examples where if I wasn't there and it was a buyer and seller, right? Whether it was one party being emotional or both, that transaction would have been lost if I was not there mediating the negotiation and really making sure that, you know, both sides do come to an agreement and realize that times are being hard-headed and one has to give and the other one has to give a little bit, right? 
Because now if it's my house or my item and I'm negotiating it, there is a little bit of pride for most people. There may be the exception to the rule, the one out of 100 or two or three out of 100. But we need to understand the element is there. Because it's ours, of course we're going to have pride in it. Of course we're going to care and want to get the most for it, right? That may cloud our judgment though. Because if my pride is in it, and again, that commodity in an open market is worth 500, but I, in, in the deepest part of my heart, believe it's worth 520, and now the buyer's willing to pay 500, and I'm like, no, I want 520. This is a special house, it's worth more. That's where things start getting a little bit crazy. And then the professional third party negotiator can come in and say, man, love your house, I know it's great. 500 is really, really fair, right? And we can now help navigate that, okay? Again, statistically proven that we sell properties for more because of exposure and everything else, but we need to understand. We need to understand all these other elements that go with it. So, let's say somebody um, now is in the process again of selling, and how about the process itself and all the vendors that we know, right? and our way of navigating and facilitating the transaction, okay? Understand that when someone like myself or another agent lists your property, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with it and we're kind of captaining the ship. We have to regulate what's going on. We have timelines, right? We have contracts involved, which always complicates stuff. You have contracts involved. And in this case, where do we send everything to escrow? A neutral third party who handles it, right? It's not the buyer and seller commingling. It's, hey, we have the escrow company who's a third party, okay? So third party, the neutrality of third party is very, very strong and very, very powerful. So again, when we look at it from different angles, it starts to make sense. So when it comes to that, right? You need to understand that also from the outside, let's say you're a potential homeowner and you want to sell your property and I as the agent will want to bring you a client. We're already going to be under the assumption that you don't know what you're doing, that we're going to have to shoulder all the load and responsibility of you know, managing the whole transaction, even if we're technically only representing the client that we're bringing you, the buyer. And it really just already has us on edge, right? It would be as if a, a lawyer is there and the defendant defends himself. It's just awkward, right? Of course, we're still gonna go through the court proceedings, but it's not like a lawyer and a lawyer and a judge. It's off, right? The uh, prosecuting side may even look at the defending side like, what? They're already gonna assume that the other side doesn't know what they're doing and they might make mistakes and they're gonna poke holes in their argument even more. Versus, you know, they're gonna go about it differently if the other side is represented with a the lawyer. They're not gonna try to pull curveballs or stuff like that. Right? Which is another thing you need to be careful of, again, if you're a homeowner, because there are some agents and, and people out there and vendors who will take advantage of you knowing that you're representing yourself. They'll sneak stuff into the contract, right? which having us can actually protect you from. Right? So again, that's another form of liability. Right? So it's just different angles and different things to, to put onto your mind. Again, it, it's not rocket science, it's just little things that we have to come to uh, understand and bring to our awareness so we can educate people better. You know, there's a bunch of stuff running rampant right now about discount brokerages and this kind of stuff and I don't really want to get into that. But as a homeowner, just understand that a professional, strong realtor is looking out for your best interest and actually gets you a better result, period. Okay? Now let's look at the home buying process, right? Imagine if you're somebody out there looking to purchase a home and you go directly to a for sale by owner, right? Do you even know what you're doing? Right? How about the process and timelines? Everything that I just described but flipped for a buyer. You know, as an agent, we can help you. We know the areas better, right? We can help you negotiate the best price, not just the best price, but also the best terms. Recommend you, you know, home inspectors and that kind of stuff to help facilitate the process, right? Obviously connecting you with a lender to help you with your financing so you can make sure that you get somebody sharp that can actually close the deal, but also the best rate and terms to help you. Okay? And again, this is going under the assumption that the person that you hire to represent you is going to be the best and looking out for your best interest. So that's really the most important part here. I think that bad experiences has kind of clouded people's judgments. Well, I know this one agent, he's lazy. Oh, this other guy screwed me over. Unfortunately, it happens. But the ones who are good are actually looking out for your best interest and will get you that desired result that you want even better. When it comes to buyers or sellers, we have dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of testimonials of people who thought, like a for sale by owner, I thought I was gonna net 20,000 with Brian, even after paying more commission, we netted you know, 30,000 more than we originally thought, so on and so forth. So the proof is in the pudding. We just now have to make the distinction 
between am I just labeling all agents as they don't know what they're doing or are there actually agents who can help me? There's a, an old article about the owner for salebyowner.com who lived, I believe, in New York and tried to sell his condo, high-rise condo on his own and couldn't do it, ended up hiring an agent and he not only actually sold it, but he sold it for a lot more than he was trying to sell it for on his own. So the owner of the website that tries to tell you you don't need an agent couldn't do it himself. Hmm, interesting. Right, now that, you can Google that article, it's all over the place and it's not hard to find. It becomes this battle now between, and this has to be a clear distinction, this is a message for the consumer, are you just doing it as pride and ego, I wanna do it on my own, just to say that I can, or are you most concerned with what's most important, which is the best results and the best amount of time, the least amount of hassle, and actually getting the most amount of money into your pocket, or if you're on the buyer side, walking into the most amount of equity. Now, this tends to fall on the side of sellers more, Right? Most people will use an agent to you know, get their own home unless they're you know, doing an investment or something like that and just looking to fix and flip and that kind of stuff. So it's more about the value proposition on the selling side, but we've been around for a long time. You know, realtors and real estate and, and agents has been around for centuries and centuries and centuries. This isn't some new um, you know, profession that came out 100 or 200 years ago. Okay? It dates way, way back. So understand that especially now in the day and age of online and, 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 and Zillow and all these places, we can give you the most up-to-date information. A lot of these websites like Zillow claim they're off by a lot of percentage points with their estimates, right? It's just an algorithm, right? You need to understand that a lot of their information is populated from our information, which is the MLS, and it's out of date a lot of times. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients, oh, I saw this property, I'm like, dude, that sold two months ago. Oh, but the website says it's available. Well, that's the website. I'm the source here, not the website. So people seem to have flipped because, again, there's so many mediocre agents. They trust websites more than us. So that's a message to you realtors. We need to step our game up. You gotta look at your local markets. You gotta really study your information. You gotta go out there and preview homes and go door knock and talk to the neighborhood. Let people know what's going on. Educate yourself on the market, market conditions and what's going on and be that resource. All that the online stuff has done is it's forced us as agents to step our game up. So step your game up, it's really that simple. Don't live in fear, right? Obviously, if you've watched this video up until this point, if you're a consumer, I'm sure you'll now at least consider much more strongly and see the importance of having an agent, right? And, and two, if you're an actual agent watching this, you're starting to see why I have so much confidence as an agent and how I can speak to people the way that I do because I know my value as an asset. Now, if you're beginning to understand, but you feel like you lack in market knowledge or some of these areas, then start you know, working on your craft, gaining some experience, and ultimately getting there. Okay, so you can be that air of confidence and, and, and certainty when it comes to a client, because we're the experts here. If you study your stuff and you know it, you are an expert. I don't care if a consumer watching this has sold one, two, three, or four homes. If you've been in the business two, three, four years and you've sold even 10 houses or eight houses every year, you have way more experience than they do, right? You have way more knowledge of the process. You're in the trenches. You're seeing all the new laws being passed and all the new programs for buyers and all that other stuff happening and everything shifting, the market shifting. They don't know that. You do. So understand and see the value in it. Now, if you're a consumer and you're watching this, which I know a lot of consumers follow me, let's hear maybe some concerns that you may have about using an agent. Um, I haven't gone too deep into other stuff like discount brokerages and that kind of stuff. I just wanted to give you kind of a surface level video. Um, again, if you're an agent, maybe you've gotten some insights from this or you have anything to add in case there are consumers who are watching this and they're gonna read the comments below just so you can give an additional uh, value add as far as who we are as realtors and what we offer. But I'm curious to hear what everybody has to say. Uh, make sure that you do like the video, share this, as I know it's a very relevant topic, especially in 2018 going into 2019. I appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. And as always, uh, if you guys need anything in the description below, you can find the links to my website and everything else that I offer. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the next video. Team BC out.